Thank you so much, Steph. And back to our top story here. Restrictions across Ontario will begin to start easing soon at three public health units. Much of the province will return to that color-coded tier system on the 16th. But keep in mind, Toronto, Peel and York will be entering the phased approach on the 22nd. What does this all mean and how is it all determined? Infectious disease expert and member of Ontario's vaccine task force, Dr. Isaac Bogosh joining now. It's been some time, Dr. Bogosh. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. All right. So you probably heard from some of our callers earlier on. There's a lot of confusion around how some of these decisions are made, uh, even the communication with it. So I want to get your take first with going back to this color coded system and the timelines that the government has put forward. Do you think it all makes sense? Well, I think we have to take a step back and look at what's been happening in Ontario. And we're seeing case numbers uh, decline. And they've been in decline in Ontario for, I don't know, over two weeks, getting close to three weeks now. So we certainly have a steady reduction in cases. Hospitalizations have also started to decline a little bit, not as much as we'd like. And intensive care unit capacity has slightly improved, not a ton, but slightly improved. So, you know, depending on where you are in the province, there, there you know, there's various burdens or various degrees of COVID-19. I think it's pretty early to start to think about this. However, they are going to do this and uh, they are going to lift restrictions in the areas of the province that are the least burdened by COVID-19 at the moment. Okay, so we've put together some graphics here and if we could pull some up just to compare um, some of the averages here to, to get give people a better picture of why some areas might be opening up. So if we can pull up the one graphic that takes a look at Hastings, Prince Edward Public Health, Kingston, Frontenac, as well as Renfrew County, and we're looking at the numbers here. So w when someone sees this, Dr. Bogosh, and I don't know if you've got the monitor and you can take a look here. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, gotcha. So the numbers are low. So this makes sense that those regions, Oh, we're going through them, um, that those regions will be opening up come Thursday. These regions will be waiting. And then when you look at the hot zones, Toronto, York and Peel, this makes sense. But I, I don't know if there's a way to go back to the one, the Chatham Kent Public Health one, the unit still seemed fairly high. So how does the government determine, OK, you're going green, you're going orange, you're going red, you're going gray. How do they determine that then looking at these numbers? Right. So if you actually go online and you can go onto the web and see their, the color coded system, there's one, two, three, four, five different colors. It goes green, yellow, orange, red and gray. I have a little cheat sheet in yes. front of me because it's <laughs> quite frankly, fast. it's hard to keep it straight. Right. I have trouble keeping it all straight. So I have a little cheat sheet in front of me. And under each one of those colors, there's several different metrics av uh, available for what constitutes being in one color. And I think people should remember, uh, you know, it was months and months ago when this was first released, there were certainly some issues with the color-coded system, likely being very loose that really enabled the infection to get pretty, uh, I would say, out of control before you'd move from one color to another. Now it's tightened up a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you were to ask 10 people in infectious diseases or epidemiology or public health, you'd still probably find some people saying they'd love to see some adjustments to it. Um, but I, I, one of the interesting things that they announced was an emergency break. And regardless of the color code, regardless of the metrics that takes you from this color to that color to that color, there is an emergency break that's now built in where the chief medical officer of health uh, in, in discussion with the local uh, medical officer of health can say, you know what, we don't like the looks of things here. Maybe there's a variant of concern. Maybe there's a big outbreak. And maybe by definition, you should be in, you know, I'm just making something up, the yellow color or the orange color. But we're going to say, no, this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we need to take uh, matters into our own hands and go outside of the color-coded system and apply an emergency break. I think if that emergency break is applied in a smart way and applied correctly, yeah, this, this, this could work. This could work. We just have to be very careful because the variants of concern are here in Ontario. They yes. are spreading. It does make it a lot more challenging to keep COVID-19 under control, as we've seen in other parts of the world. Dr. Bogosh, when school comes into play, well, already in play for a lot of students across Ontario, but for the hot zones, Toronto, Peel, York next week, how is that all going to factor in when we look at possible transmission? Yeah, it's 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 certainly a factor. We can't ignore it. And in fact, you know, we've got uh, schools that are, are are opening up and kids going back to school simultaneous with uh, in many parts, not all parts of the province, uh, businesses slowly and gradually opening up in larger and larger gatherings being permitted. So it could muddy the waters in terms of figuring out where transmission is occurring and how transmission is occurring. Um, it, it certainly could. Uh, and, and, and when you look at, uh, you know, project, projected human mobility patterns, I don't think it would come to anyone's surprise that there will be 
a potential rise in cases in some parts of the province. The key thing here is, can we keep that trajectory of cases headed in this direction? You know, do we, is this enough to really keep cases headed in the downward direction and decompressing our hospital system, decompressing our ICUs? And, you know, I think if we start to see that uh, dip, if we start to see that uh, level off and we're not getting that reduction in cases, and of course, if we see a rise in cases, we need to rapidly pivot. We need to rapidly pivot because with the variants of concern circulating, we've seen how in other parts of the world, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. And there, you know, quite frankly, there's no reason for another lockdown. We don't need to do this. Uh, we don't need to repeat that again. And we know how to we know how to prevent this from transmitting in the community. OK, Dr. Isaac Bogosh, appreciate your time. And I'm going to need to get that cheat sheet as well. Put right here like the one you have. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Take care of yourself. Have a good one. You too. All right, 712 right now. No cheat sheet needed for Devo Brown, though. He's got it all up here.